Hi, so today we'll be looking at some of the most common errors that we make in our Physics Unit 6 exams. And these are actually the errors which uh, differentiate the A stars or, you know, the 90% from the 100% or the full marks. So after looking at, the, at these errors, hopefully you'll be able to score 100%. You never know. So the first error that we're going to talk about is that uh, we give our answer to more significant figure or more decimal places than the precision of our instrument or the precision or the significant figures given in the question. For example, if there is a question regarding a Werner caliper, we know that the Werner caliper has a precision of 0.01 millimeters, right? So if we give our answer to 2.206 millimeters, we're actually giving our answer to three decimal places whereas our Werner caliper has a precision of only two decimal places. So giving our answer to more decimal places than the precision is wrong. Okay. So the ideal scenario should be to give your answer to one decimal place less. So the ideal answer over here should be 2.02. That should be able to score you full marks for this question. If you give uh, same number of significant figures, uh, same number of decimal places, for example 2.20, that should be okay. But the ideal scenario should be to give one decimal place less than your precision or one decimal place less or one significant figure less than the significant figure given in your question. So there goes error number one. Moving on to error number two. Okay, so sometimes the question tells us to compare the percentage uncertainty. Okay, so um, the question may, may tell us, ask us whether the use of a meter rule is suitable for measuring, suppose, um, a length of 20 centimeters. Okay. So what we do is we calculate the percentage uncertainty. We calculate the percentage uncertainty, the, uh, uncertainty. Then in our answer we say that yes, this percentage uncertainty is uh, suitable. Okay. Sometimes we use suitable or similar words. Okay. But this is not the word that they're looking for. After stating percentage uncertainty, the, the word that you should state, the uh, sentence that you should say, is that the percentage uncertainty is very small. The percentage uncertainty is small enough. Uh, or less than 5% or less than 10%. So the meter rule is suitable for taking the measurement. The next error that we're going to look at is uh, another error where we, uh, where there is a lack of uh, description. Okay. So for example, the question tells us that state how ln i equal to bv plus ln a. Okay. So uh, perhaps we want to plot a graph of ln i versus v. And the question asks us how this equation can be used to draw, to draw a straight line. Okay, so what we do is we write y is equal to mx plus c. Okay, so this is what we see in our mark schemes and we often assume that this will give, uh, give us full marks. But the thing that is not written in the mark scheme is that we have to explicitly state what is y, what is m, what is x and what is c. Right? So you have to explicitly state that your y is equal to ln of i your x will be plotted uh, as v and your gradient will give you um, b and the y-intercept will give you ln of a okay so stating these explicitly is important that was our, that was our error number three moving on to our error number four uh, uh, this is a very uh, silly error actually but uh, we make this uh, mistake more often than never this is quite common in the candidates we sometimes assume that protectors have a uh, precision of 0 0.1 degrees they never do okay protractors always have a precision of one degree okay so that was error number four moving on graphs graphs are a very common question in uh, your unit six or maybe unit three if you're sitting for unit three so the one mistake that we do is uh, making our points a little bigger so uh, the um, the rule that the examiners follow in this case you have larger squares okay and you have smaller squares inside those larger squares right you have smaller squares like this if your uh, point crosses more than half more than half the size of a smaller square then you don't get marked for that square uh, you don't get marked for that point so if your point is a little bit bigger or equal to half the size of a small square you don't get marked for that uh, point also, if you make a point very small, there is a, always a risk that your point may not be seen in the scanned paper. So the safest option that the examiners prefer, suggest, is to uh, put crosses 
or plus uh, crosses and you can put a circle around your cross uh, if your cross cannot be seen properly but this this intersection between your crosses this should be the point what you're looking for okay and uh, this will uh, help you get that mark moving on to error number six okay so often often in a hurry when we have a lot of points okay maybe you have a lot of points what we do is instead of looking at our uh, distribution of the points we simply connect the first point and the last point in our graphs okay so that gives us our line uh, whereas this is a common rule of thumb it is not accurate in all the cases and this is in fact a very common trap as the examiners call it in physics unit 6 and unit 3 what you should do rather is that you should draw your line in such a way so that there are equal number of points equally spaced above and below your line okay so uh, here i have three points below and two points above maybe i can uh, do a, bi uh, a bit better i can draw this line i have two points on this side and two points on the other side so this is how you should draw your line equal number of points on both sides of your line moving on to error number seven we know that radius is equal to diameter by two so if your diameter has a percentage uncertainty of 10 percent so your radius should have a percentage uncertainty of 5% wrong this is a very common error dividing by 2 does not decrease the percentage uncertainty of radius the percentage uncertainty of radius is still 10% dividing by the constant does not affect your percentage uh, percentage uncertainty show that the acceleration is equal to 2 meter per second okay the question tells you to show that the acceleration is equal to 2 meter per second so often the error that we do is we show the detailed calculation here and immediately after that we write our answer is acceleration is equal to 2 meter per second square and then we write shown or proven or we just leave our answer an answer here but uh, this is not what the examiner is look, looking for they know that the acceleration will round off to 2 meter per second they know it and they know that you know it too but what they want to see is that what is your answer obtained from your calculation maybe your answer is 1.7 okay this is what they want to see because if you have 1.7 if 1.7 is the correct answer another candidate might have 1.9 another candidate might have 1.8 all these three results round off to 2 meter per second square so how will the examiner understand from your answer whether you obtain the correct answer or not so what you do is you write your answer and after writing your answer you show that okay which is approximately equal to 2 so my acceleration is approximately equal to 2 as asked by the question but uh, you should even if you leave your answer up to 1.7 that is enough that is enough if they tell you to show your answer to 2 then you have to show one significant figure more so 1.7 is more than enough but if you want to uh, round it off to 2 that is okay but showing 1.7 one significant figure more is mandatory The ninth error that I'm going to talk about is this. Suppose you have a lot of points here, right? You have a lot of points here and you know your rule well. You are not connecting the last and first points. You are actually drawing your line in such a way so as to have equal number of points on both sides of your line, right? So this should be your line. If you think this is your line, then you're missing one mark. The mark that you're losing is your y-intercept. Often we uh, get uh, uh, important intercepts from the y, from uh, this uh, y-intercept important parameters we get from this y-intercept so uh, extending our graph to the y-intercept is often uh, necessary another mistake that uh, the uh, students do is that when we see that we have uh, uh, these sort of points a bit scattered perhaps these sort of points okay so we tend to we tend to take our line through the origin okay we tend to take our line through the origin whether it wants to go through the origin or not well if you look very closely you can see that if you draw the line of best fit it might not go through the origin it might not go through the origin and that's okay some questions are designed in such a way so that they don't pass through the origin there will be a y-intercept so it is not always always the case that your line should go through the origin uh, it will vary from case to case now the last mistake the last common mistake that we are going to talk about is that we don't draw the large triangle that the question talks about when drawing when uh, calculating gradients okay 
what we do is we just take two points we, say we take a point here we take a point here and we calculate the gradient as y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1 the gradient but what if your gradient value is wrong where will the examiner give a mark then the examiner will come back to your graph and the examiner will look for the working of your gradient the working of the points that you have taken to calculate your gradient now if you take very small points here and here which uh, cannot be even seen by the examiner then you will uh, you might not get that mark but if you draw a large triangle the triangle that you used to draw your gradient to calculate your gradient then you will get that partial mark so these were the top 10 errors that uh, we see in the students now i'm going to give you some of the extra tips that i um, got from looking at the examiner reports from uh, several uh, several past papers so the number one tip that uh, we are going to talk about is practicals are necessary practicals in your school or in your lab they're mandatory there are no alternative uh, to practical uh, this is especially applicable for IAL if you're sitting in the UK then uh, you already have to sit for a practical exam but for the students who uh, uh, are sitting for the alternative to practical then for them the practical doing the pra practicing the practical in your lab is uh, necessary number two in the new specification for calculating percentage uncertainty only half range will be applicable half range divided by your measurement into 100 percent in our previous uh, in our previous specification range divided by measurement into 100 was also applicable was also acceptable but in the new specification only half range divided by measurement into 100 is uh, acceptable although the physics unit 6 does not require full knowledge or detailed knowledge of your one and uh, physics unit 4 and 5 but there are short uh, definitions definitions like uh, uh, what is simple harmonic motion what is resonance so these sort of definitions you should know you should know your theory well and then you should uh, sit for your physics unit 6 and you should know those keywords perfectly so that you don't lose two or three marks in those definitions okay so definitions perfect definitions Tip number four, when drawing a graph, try to cover more than half in the x direction and more than half in the y direction. And if uh, if necessary, you can make a graph in the landscape mode. Okay, So that is also told by the examiners that if you want, you can um, draw a graph in the landscape mode if that helps you cover more than 50% of the graph paper. Okay. So another mistake that we do Another tip that, that I'm going to give you is that we often don't show our working for the answer that we obtained from a previous part of the question. So uh, if we don't show our working, that is where we lose some of our marks. If your answer is incorrect, then you will no, not have any space for scoring marks. So it is important that you show your working in every part of the question, even if the answer, even if the data of that question is obtained from a previous part of the question. So that's all that we had today. Hopefully, these uh, 10 common mistakes and the 5 tips that I've given you will um, help you notch up your grade a little bit more. If you want other uh, the tips on other units, please let me know in the comment section below. Thank you very much for watching.